Good afternoon. My name is Mohammad Abedi. I'm an industrial engineer that I've been working for 10 years in Isamob company, one of the largest classic home furniture factory in Iran, an area of 7,000 square meters and six floors. We produce home furniture such as sofa, table, buffet, showcase, chair, armchair, and so on. When I started my job at the company 10 years ago, it was a small factory with 50 employees managed by traditional structure. The furniture industry is one of the most traditional industries in Iran. It was a hard pass for me because I had to implement the scientific concepts on a conventional framework. After 10 years, the company is one of the best known furniture companies in the country with 20 branches all around Iran. No 200 employees are working in expanded, modernized company. However, we believe improvement has no end. The journey is never ending. No, I have to leave the company after 10 years. It is a bit hard for me. They are like my family. I feel the factory and I both grew up together, step by step. I love them, but now it is time for me to open a new door. I will move to Stockholm in early September 2021, so I have to find a good job. I aim to apply to a forward-looking company to gain experience in a more advanced and competitive area. But no, I want to introduce our company. This is Isomops. The factory has six floors. Minus two is woodworking unit. Minus one is raw material warehouse. Ground floor is packaging and assembly. Plus one is upholstery unit. Plus two is pre-painting unit. And plus three, the uppermost floor is painting. I'm going to start from minus two woodworking unit. But before that, I want to show you wood warehouse.
I'm in factory wood warehouse. As you may see, there is more than 1,000 cube meters beach wood. 80% of our consumption is beach and just 20% is pine. We import beach wood directly from Georgia. Our monthly consumption is around 100 cube meters. There are two common ways to dry wood. One, air drying, two, kill drying. The acceptance moisture limit in a wood is eight to 12%. As you see, it is a handheld humidity meters. You have to turn on, calibrate it, and touch to the wood. It's near 11% humidity. That's good. It is central dust collector. It puts negative pressure to collect airborne sawdust. As you may know, airborne sawdust may cause allergic reaction, respiratory symptoms, cancer, and so on. Well, finally we reached the woodworking. It has two main subdivisions. First, woodworking machinery. Second, woodworking assembly. I can introduce the production line based on the machinery, but I plan to introduce it based on the process. Why? because it helps you to understand the logic of process. Why we do this, why we do that. It would be a super adventure. Welcome to my magic school bus. Well, the process started by cross cutting. The lumber is cut based on the chart that prepared by planning department that I lead. A lumber of around two meters in length is usually divided into two or three smaller parts. This paper shows the dimension, cutting dimensions, length, thickness, width, and the quantity of cutting. Single rib saw. It makes each side of the wooden part smooth and flat. As you see, both of the wood are rough and uneven, but the output is different, completely different. Soft, smooth, and even. How does it work? Let's see. This piece is before the process. As you see, this side and this side is uneven and rough, but the output is completely different. This is output, this is the output. This piece is completely soft, smooth and even. This side and this side. Now it is time for the surfaces. We have to make each surface smooth and clean. The jointer, this machine, is one of the most classic machines used to produce a flat surface aligned the length of board. But we use another machine. It is called a double surface 
planner. I will show it to you closer. It does two tasks at the same time. First, to make both surface smooth and soft. Meanwhile, it adjusts the thickness of the wooden board. I mean, it is very common for a wooden board to have different thickness along its length. With this, we would have equal thicknesses along the full length of the board. Before I explain the next step, I must mention a covered paper that contains the operation process chart. It's moved by the items batch. This shows clearly which kind of rail is the batch, a leg, an arm, who does this, which step, and how many minutes it takes. This is a kind of real-time report, and we use many of them. Now we have some smooth, well-cut, well-shaped piece of wood. Based on the process, we have to glue them together, like this. But there is a minor issue. They are not strong enough and stable. What is problem? How can we strengthen this process? By this machinery, finger joints. This one is before process and this one is after process. Finger joint makes the side of each profile interlock with the other one. First, we have two smooth and soft sides, but the output is entirely different. As you see, it gives us a solid and seamless joint. Now, we are ready to solve the puzzle. We just need some glue. I would like to show you a monster. It is pneumatic wood compressor rotary clamp courier. Finally, some small wooden boards are changed to extensive wooden plates. You may ask why we do this. Why do we cut big lumber into smaller pieces, then stick the smaller pieces together to have a big wooden frame? There are some important reasons. Number one, to reduce wood consumption. By doing this, we change the natural dimensions of the wood to our desired dimensions, not only in length, but also in width. This causes less wood consumption. Number two, to decrease stress and strain in the wood. Indeed, based on the tree grouse history, physical and mechanical properties, drying process, and a number of other factors, wooden lumber is full of stress and strain. By cutting lumber into smaller parts, a lot of stress and strain will be relieved. Number 3. For better drying. By cutting the lumber into smaller pieces, we increase the cross-sectional area of the wood. This causes the wood to lose moisture faster and dry out. These are some of the reasons. Of course, there are several. Now we have to cut both sides of the wooden plate at the same time to alignment. This is double cross cut.
Now, we have a big, strong and integrated wooden part. This is a CNC curve saw. It is the first step where we cut the wood based on the furniture dimension. The command line is right by G-code. The CNC curve saw is mainly used to cut irregular or curved shapes. Now we have some pieces of furniture. This is rare rail of a sofa. As you see, some of the items are made up of two parts and they are not balanced. So they have to balance. We go back to the third step, the double surface planner to make each surface smooth, clean and balanced. As you see in the last section, this piece was unbalanced. We balance it with double surface planner. As you can see, both surfaces of the wood are clean, but the two sides are not. No, we want to smooth both sides of the items. It is job of the double automatic copy shaper. Now, based on the operation process, we have to glue the items, stick them together and clamp them strongly. After some hours, the glue will be dry and we release the clamp. The next few steps are confusing. It will be the second time we cut big wooden plate into smaller pieces and then we stick the smaller one together to have a big wooden frame. Surprisingly, again, we will cut the wooden plate into a smaller one. Why we do this? I will show you later. Now. We start to draw a template on the wooden panel. Now we have to cut base on the template via brown. We do it with the bansa. It needs accuracy and concentration to follow the line. No, it is explanation time. It is a bit hard to completely clear. I couldn't find the technical English term for this process, but I tried to make it too understandable by a simple example. We have three wooden 
items. This one represents the wooden item on the early stages. As you see, it is stick to floor from both sides. Because there is no curvature and no protrusion. This is the second one. It represents the middle stages after the wood curve saw. As you see, it doesn't stick to the floor from that side because it has curvature, but it sticks to floor from the other side. Now we go for the last one. It does not stick to the floor at all because it has curvature and protrusion. I hope with this I have been able to help clarify the issue. Now we have a chair leg. It just needs some process to the end. Wood shaver, table saw, wood drilling machine, this sander and so on. This is a wood shaper. A wood shaper, usually just shaper in North America or a spindle molder in the UK and Europe. It's used to shape some simple design to the wood. However, depending on the configuring of tools, the cutting shape varies and is different. If you want some complex wooden shape, you need a CNC wood carving router machine. These are CNC wood router machines. A CNC wood router is an automatic machine for innovative 2D or 3D routing, cutting, carving, drilling, grooving or miling on wood, stone, MDF and many other materials. After hundreds of terms, machines, processes, and concepts, I have an artistic surprise. Traditional carving, an ancient art. Let's just see. One of the critical operations in woodworking or carpentry is jointing. There are some creative jointing methods that carpenters have been using for 100 years. One of the oldest and the strongest one is mortise and tenon joint. This is a tenon. Okay, we've done this section, it's called woodworking machinery. Now we put all the furniture items on the shelf. It is the final step of this section. Now we have hundreds of furniture items such as front rail, side rail, front legs, rear legs, arm, arm support, press rail, etc. They are stored on shelves until they are needed. The other section I will show you is called woodworking assembly. But before we go to the following steps, I want to overview some common manufacturing methods. 